This episode of Small Town Western New York was made possible by the following supporters. Hi, on this episode of Small Town Western New York, I'm taking a day trip to a place that most of us Western New Yorkers really only hear about when there's bad news or bad weather to report, or as a location of a super popular summer balloon rally. But this place is so much more than a harbinger of bad news or a side note on a local weather forecast. It's simply spilling over with charm, character, and history, all set in a super picturesque location. I'm headed to the town of Wellsville. was named after Gardner Wells, who's a major landowner here, and he actually owned the entirety of what is now the downtown Main Street area. Wellsville is the largest community in Allegheny County. It initially grew due to the tanning lumber, oil, and natural gas industries, and at one point it had three large tanneries running simultaneously here during the early part of the 19th century. The town's first oil rush came in 1879, when O.P. Taylor first discovered black gold here west of town. Since the Second World War, the town's economy has been driven by a number of energy sector companies, as well as engineering and manufacturing. One of Wellsville's most attractive features is its vibrant and classic Main Street, which includes an appropriately appointed small town theater, great shops and restaurants, and one of the best libraries in all of Western New York. After a quick delicious lunch at the famous Beef House, I had a little time before my first interview of the day to take a short walk to explore many of the unique shops that line both sides of this great mid-century influenced stylish Main Street. Before I knew it, I had to get moving on down to the library to meet up with the library's director, Nick Gunning, for a tour and talk about this incredible Wellsville institution. The delineation between this library and so many others yeah. is that this is an activity and events center Absolutely. in as much as it's a public library. Yeah. And so many public libraries are struggling to define mm. what they are and the public's perception of what they are. Yeah. And you guys have just done that and just been on your merry way <laughs> for a long time. Here. Yeah. But I think it's important to show people that, hey, there's another aspect to a library that you probably not understood yeah. and thought about before. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. There's you know, there's still that perception of libraries or places where you get shushed. Very stuff. And yeah, you read, you know, you read those colorless grab books. <laughs> uh, and we have those books, you know. <laughs> right, we, right. we have them, you can check them out. But it's uh, it's really it's a place I think for the whole family. Sure. It's a place where whatever your level of interest, you know, we have people who are regular library users come in all the time who would say, oh, I don't really read. Right. But they love the library, they cherish the library because of all the different well, things yeah, we do. Yeah, you've the Tuesdays on the terrace, yes. right? That's lunches, lunch. yeah. And you've got the 300 seat theater downstairs yes. where you host anything from speaker events to concerts to yeah. dance recitals to the ballet yeah. you said is coming yeah, up Yeah, with the Nutcracker, yeah, right? coming And back. then you've got so many other peripheral yeah. activities. And then this yeah. weekend, you have your Fall Fest. Our Fall Fest, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's uh, that's the thing we do. We do it a couple times throughout the season. Uh, and we try to just have a lot of stuff going on in the front lawn. So we have crafts for all ages. Sure. We do book giveaways. Uh, this time around, we have uh, goats coming because kids always love, <laughs> I love mean, goats. I say the kids love the goats. But, but you love Everybody loves yeah, the yeah, goats, yeah, so does. yeah. Every yeah. aspect of this building, and yeah. I call it a campus. I, I don't know if that's <laughs> the proper term. No, I mean, I think that's. But to me, it feels yeah. like a campus because yeah. you have all these attributes that really are like a microcosm yeah. of like a larger campus. Absolutely. Right? You have this beautiful front lawn that you put events on that's even just great to hang out. You've got these bench yep. areas, yep. The trees, and the trees are just mature enough yep. to provide, you know, the coverage that you would want on a hot sunny yeah. day. With Wi Fi coverage. Don't forget that. Do. The Wi Fi <laughs> covers the whole <laughs> lawn. Yeah. And then you got a terrace in the front, you yeah. got the terrace on the back. Yep. In the interior, you've got all these beautiful sitting spots. Yeah. I mean, it's really not what you expect from a library anymore. It's, I mean, I've worked in libraries for 20 years, and it's unlike any library I've ever been to. Yep. More and more, I mean, you're seeing libraries as community centers. I think yeah. it's I think it's about altering your definition of what a library is and what that can mean. Because, right. I mean, we're here to, to benefit and support and enrich the community. And we've found success in, in doing that differently, like finding different ways to connect with people that are maybe non-traditional for what you would have expected from a library 30 years ago, you know. But the, the success we find is, I think, in continuing to try and do different things. Another great building here in Wellsville with the perfect allure for this time of year is the Pink House. Add in not one, but two ghost stories, and you have the stuff of local legend. 
The legend goes that the house is haunted by the ghost of a young girl who drowned in the front fountain, as well as the ghost of her aunt who committed suicide after a love affair gone wrong. Do they ever go right? Her death was actually the inspiration for Hannaford Lennox Gordon's famous poem, Pauline. The house was also the setting for a 1987 Emmy award-winning film, The Birthmark, based on the short story by Nathaniel Hawthorne. From the Pink House, I headed back down to Main Street to the Wellsville Arts Center to meet with the center's owner and brainchild to learn just what it's all about and what his inspiration was to open the center in Wellsville. As its name implies, the Arts Center is just that, an all-encompassing bustling hive of art-oriented activity for the community that not only helps aggregate, but also cross-promotes all that this town and county art scene has to offer. This is the uh, creative town square. People come to express creative things, to do creative things, to not be afraid of expressing themselves right. in a creative way. Everybody is accepted. It doesn't matter, you know, who you are, where you came from, what your abilities are, you're right. accepted here. And I think people come to this place because they know that they can be, feel comfortable here. Well, can, and so let's talk about what you have, because what you have is absolutely incredible. So you have, when you walk in, we've got this beautiful cafe with a stage where you do open mics, you do performances, right. and then on the other side where we're standing here, you have this gallery. This is a local right? artisan store yeah, and gallery. Yeah. yeah, and then now the big surprise, because I didn't know this existed until you took me back there, is you have a rabbit's warren, uh, these beautiful ceramic studios and these art studios, and then you have a, a kitchen. You have, you yeah. Have, you have Cooking classes, cooking classes and yeah, and, yeah. But none of this yeah. is expected when you walk into this beautiful right. And then upstairs there's painting lofts. I would say in the craft world uh, or the artistic world, the ceramics is really our core competency. Right. Um, we have a ceramic education here that's as good as any college. The place is very lively um, during class and the wonderful thing is if you take a class here, you could use the facility anytime it's open. I'm a world traveler, you know, I've been to, I can't tell you how many countries and all over the, the United States, of course. I have never seen a place like this. Yeah, me That either. was comprehensive uh, yeah. like this, yeah. you know, where you had the music, uh, the coffee house, the restaurant, the uh, school, sure. the education. Not only do we have adult education, but we also have uh, education for high school and junior high school kids. Although Wellsville might be most regionally famous for the Great Wellsville Balloon Rally that takes place here every third full weekend of July, the town makes a great day trip any time of year. With its super walkable main street and unique events and activities at the library, the arts center, and a theater, and so much more, there's nothing quite like the small town pride you get when you're here. This episode of Small Town Western New York was made possible by the following supporters.